I know Jesus and I've heard of Paul, but who are you? Then the possessed man went berserk, jumped the exorcist, beat them up, and tore off their clothes. Naked and bloody, the God. Hallelujah. Let me, let me read from here. I'm not quite excited about what the media team is do, taking me through. I don't know if they are in the service with us or not. The man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. When this became known to the Jews and Greeks living in Ephesus, they were all seized with fear, and the name of the Lord Jesus was held in high honor. Many of those who believed now came and openly confessed what they had done. A number who had practiced sorcery brought their scrolls together and burned them publicly. When in this way, the word of the Lord spread widely and grew in power. After all this had happened, Paul decided to go to Jerusalem, passing through Macedonia and Achaia. After I have been there, he said, I must visit Rome also. Hallelujah. Beloved, it's important for you to understand that you've got to play your game and not Paul's game. You don't have to play your pastor's game. You don't have to play your father's game, your husband's game, nobody's game. You've got to play your game. And you've got to prepare to play your game. It, is, it must be about your Jesus. Now, the most important thing I want to leave with you today in this service is, it says, seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. Now, Sceva means mind reader. If you look at the name Skiva, it is mind reader. Now, so these boys, or seven boys, owed their fatherhood to a mind reader. Amen. So all that they have been used to is the ability to use the mind and not to use the spirit. They are good at mind reading and because they have been raised up by a mind reader by nature. Amen. And it's important to me when it says the seven sons of Sceva because the mind is being touched on here. And this morning, I want you to understand that the wrong mindset will destroy you. You need to have the right mindset. And I want to encourage somebody in today's service that you've got to have a growth mindset. Hallelujah. It's important because the place of the mind is very, very crucial in your success. A lot of times we behave, think, and act as though the mind is useless. But God who gave the mind had a reason for the mind. And the mind you possess. That is why scripture tells us that let this mind be in you, which was in Christ. Christ had a mindset. And that was what made him successful. And these guys had a mindset. And their negative mindset was to play Paul's game. They didn't understand what Paul knew. They just saw Paul playing his game. But they did not know how he prepared to play his game. They did not know how he relied on God. But they looked at it and had the wrong mindset that if he can mention the name of Jesus and perform these wonders, we too can. We are seven. We are perfect in our order. Sometimes we think we are so perfect and we have everything in place so we can do anything we want. Hallelujah, somebody. But Proverbs 16, 9 says, A man's mind plans his way as he journeys through life. This is amplified. It says, A man's mind 
plans his way as he journeys through life. If you are on the journey of life, you need your mind to plan your ways. A lot of us are doing things that we have not taken the time to plan for. We get into marriages we did not plan for. We got jobs that we did not plan for. We got to places that we never planned for. And that is what the problem is. But it says a, man, a man's mind, your mind must be put to work. You must have a growth mentality. Is somebody with me? It's, and he continues to say, but the Lord directs his steps and establishes them. God is looking for your steps to direct and to establish. But your mind must have some plan. Your mind must be put to work. Don't you sit back for somebody to do the mind work for you. You know the company you are working at, somebody did the mind work to create it. Why do you think you can just spiritualize everything in that company and pray your way through and be successful? No wonder you are getting so frustrated. Amen. Amen. You know the system you live in? The mind worked it out. What makes you think you can just spiritualize everything and dominate? There is a place for the mind. That I want you to understand that you've got to put things in perspectives for yourself. Romans 12 verse 2 says, And do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs. The world has superficial values and customs which you should not conform with. They are shallow. They are superficial, meaning they are shallow. They are just on the surface. A lot of them are artificial. It says don't conform to them. A lot of us are conforming to, 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 to things that are just superficial. It's not deep. I want to dare you this morning to leave the shallow waters. You know what you are running with and thinking everybody must listen to you? You are not deep enough. It's shallow. Don't conform to the shallow waters. You must have a growth mentality. You've got to, be, you've got to go deep. And if you have to go deep in life, the mind must be involved. That is why I've been telling you in this year that let's get it right. It says, but be transformed. Now that is a mind thing coming up. Now be transformed and progressively changed. As, listen, as you mature spiritually. So I know, how many of us want to mature spiritually? Now hear this. As you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind. It takes the work you do with the mind to create or to afford you spiritual growth. I'm sorry to disappoint you that I did not just find, I have not found praying in tongues in this passage. There is a place for praying in tongues, building upon your most holy faith. I believe it with all my heart. But there is also a place of renewal of mind that injects into your system spiritual growth. Play your game. Leave your pastor's game. Is somebody with me? It's time to prepare to play your game. The preparation must be a mind preparation. Change your mindset. The poverty mentality is killing us. There is enough to go around. So whatever you have, share it. Is it wisdom? Share it. Is it wealth? Share it. Whatever you have, except you don't have it. Is somebody with me? Because the mind, the, 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 the progressive transformation of the mind brings change that affects your spiritual growth. It says focusing on godly values, not superficial values. Values that will take you deeper. 
and ethical attitudes. Is somebody ready to go deep? Let's leave the superficial customs. It may be appealing, but it's superficial. Hallelujah. It will take us nowhere. Let's get to the deeper depth. It says deep calleth unto deep. Hallelujah. It says so that you may prove for yourselves, not for me, for yourselves, the will of God. What the will of God is. That which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. Beloved, you need your mind to go to work. The right way. You've got to chew on some scriptures. You've got to get on some biblical principles and set the tone for yourself. It should not be about the Jesus Paul is preaching. Don't you go using his name without understanding it. You've got to encounter that Jesus and proclaim your own Jesus. Don't play anybody's game. Amen. It's important because, you see, your mindset plays a significant role in your outcomes. And that is what research shows, that mindset plays significant roles in outcomes. So don't take it for granted and stop spiritualizing everything around you. There is so much solution and answers around you and you are not seeing it because you're not putting your mind to work. You are thinking it must come from somebody's anointing oil bottle. I don't know how that works. And you think it must come from church. No. You're not going to get rich from church. No, this is not a bank. So don't you think that when you come giving to God or some Paul that you are listening to or some pastor you are listening to tells you bring some money in and God will increase it. No, you know, you have, you've got to have understanding. Yeah. Don't you give without understanding. Yeah. Yeah. Don't just take money out because some pastor is saying bring the money and God will increase you. The church is not a bank. The church does not double money. Amen. The church needs you to give out of your overflow. It's because a lot of people are not in their overflow. They complain about church taking money. Because church definitely needs money to thrive. The church is not a business. So when you become a member of the church, put your mind to work and let God bless your creativity so that out of the abundance of your wealth, you will give to your church and you will not complain. Amen. But when you don't do this, and you spiritualize everything, and you think the pastor must give you some prophetic word, and that is what will prosper you, ooh, you'll be disappointed. Amen. Because your mindset will affect your outcomes. It's important. Three things I want to give you, and I will leave. Your mindset will affect your outcome based on your understanding. Understanding is key. You've got to have understanding. Scripture says that the children of Issachar, they understood the times. And they knew what Israel ought to do. Listen, your understanding will project you into a place of leadership. Your understanding will empower you with knowledge. Amen. Amen. Now, and what is understanding basically is what you perceive or discover with your mind. So God has given you the mind to be able to perceive and, 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 and understand what is happening around you. Perceive and discover everything he has hidden around you. So after you have finished praying, allow your mind to bring you to the place of perception. You've got to have perception. When you encounter a man of God, 
you must be able to perceive by your understanding that you will be blessed through this. Like Elisha and the, 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 the woman who prepared a place for uh, him. The woman spoke to her husband and said, I perceive that this man is a man of God. Let's prepare a place in this house for him. That changed their life. Beloved, what would change your life is not the olive oil bottle. It's your understanding. It's what you perceive by the word of God. Because what you perceive will put you into action. Because understanding will make you learn. Understanding will bring you into favor. Amen. Understanding will produce patience in you. It's because you lack understanding. That is why you take life at the level you're taking it. And you think that it has to take some pastor to carry you to the next level. It has to take some sermon to carry you to the next level. No. Amen. It takes understanding to create a harmony between your five senses. A lot of us, we are so confused every time because there is no harmony between your five senses and your spiritual sense. So what your five senses should be producing and letting you or making you aware of, no, you're depending on Paul, that the, the Jesus, the pastor, is preaching. Paul's game. Hallelujah. Is somebody with me? Amen. Because you've got to allow, you see, at every given time in your pursuit, there are two things you must have. A clear insight. A clear insight. You know why you lack a clear insight? Because you're not putting the mind to work. Concerning your life. A lot of times, one of the burdens I've had as a pastor is when people talk to you and, and expect that you will have a clear insight about their journey. And that is what will make them know that they are on the right path. This makes you vulnerable. Amen. You need a clear insight. That is why mindset is crucial. Because it must produce understanding. Are you with me? A clear insight. And then intelligence in practical matters. Whatever you are pursuing. Is it marriage? You must have a clear insight. And the intelligence in the practicality of it. Is it a job? You must have a clear insight. And the intelligence in the practicality of it. Is it being a church member? You must have a clear insight. And an intelligence in the practicality of being a church member. You don't just do things because the spirit is talking. God has given you a mind. Don't be misled. Are you with me? Amen. Amen. So it's important that you come to this realization. Is somebody with me? Because your mindset will affect your outcome. It will. If you look at the outcomes of your life right now, it's the mindset with which you did certain things. That is the outcome you have. But if you change the mindset and allow the Holy Spirit to help you, this is what I mean by prepare to play your game. Because this is the season for your game. You know what? The referee wants to change a player on the pitch and you are the next in line. He wants to bring you on board so you can play your game. How prepared are you? It's your season. It's your time. Amen. Because understanding comes with a great force to make a difference in your life all the time. That is why Paul in Romans 12 was talking about renewing the mind. Renewing the mind. Because the mind, if you can grow spiritually, it's going to stem from the mind. 
if you can, you can be successful in anything, it's going to begin in the mind. Because as you see, you perceive. Amen. You don't need me to prophesy to you. You need the Holy Spirit to help you prepare so you can play your game. Hallelujah. Amen. Is somebody with me? You know the reason why you find it difficult to do the things you have to do? It's because you don't have understanding. Understanding will always open you up to a working mentality of the subject. Every time. When you put your mind to it, you see, that is why it says, I can do all things through Christ. Have this mind which was in Christ. So if I can do anything through Christ, it means I have everything Christ has. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Amen. Is somebody with me? Hmm? Is somebody with me? Your mindset will help you in adapting, okay, to everything that you go through. Listen, you are going to go through everything in your life. You are going to be experiencing everything. I mean, that's the good news I have for you. Amen. It does not matter whether you believe it's not going to happen or not. I'm here to announce to you that it will happen. Whether you have been anointed or not, some of the anointing is for suffering. Amen. Are you listening? So you've got to understand that before your life is over, you would experience it all. So it's important that you brace yourself with the right mindset so you can adapt. Amen. I read somewhere uh, before that when th those who invented the car tires that we put under our cars, the first time they invented them, they did them hard rock so that anything they walk on, they will crash the thing instead. But it wasn't successful because they realized that, oh no, there are things that tire cannot crash. So what they did now is what we have. To make it tender and soft so that even if you go past a, a very a metal, it won't crash it. But the tire has the ability to adapt to the, 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 the metal on the road to keep going. So if your journey can get to a successful end, you've got to have the right mindset to be able to adapt. Because there are days you will wake up and life will be hell. Amen. There are days you wake up and people you have trusted will betray you. There are days you wake up and investments you have done will come to zero. There are days you wake up and people who have always been there for you, you will be told they are dead. You've got to adapt. You cannot say because they are dead, then I would also die. Amen. You've got to adapt to whatever situation life throws at you. And the only way you can adapt is having the right mindset. The seven sons of Skiva had the wrong mindset. But I dare you to have the right mindset so you can prepare to play your game. Because creation is groaning and waiting for your manifestation. Because you have a part in this match. And you are needed on the pitch. And you've got to shine. For he says, let your light shine. So that all men will see it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You also have to have the understanding that your mindset would always be able to shift in the right direction. You see, when the seven sons of Sceva saw Paul playing his game, their mindset shifted in the wrong direction. 
And you know what happened to them? They got beaten. When you become, look, life can beat you up. Life can suck everything out of you that you will only be bleeding and leaking every good juice that is in you. And I pray this will not happen to you. I pray that the Lord will grant you the mindset that will shift in the directions that will improve your health, that will decrease your stress, that you will become more resilient to life's challenges. That is the kind of mindset you you need. I call it growth mindset. So you can develop through every ability and work that God has given you. My final scripture says, Proverbs 14, 23 says, In all labor there is profit. I want you to understand. It says, all, I think NIV says, all hard work brings a profit. But mere talk leads to poverty. It's time for you to do some hard work. It's time for you to allow the right mindset so you can play your game. Don't be like the seven sons of Skiva. If you end up like the seven sons of Skiva, Life will beat you up. You will bleed. And you will leak. And nobody will be drawn to your story. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. And the Lord cause his face to shine on you. So you can prepare to play your game. In Jesus name. Amen. Kindly support our ministry financially by donating into our bank account. And you will surely be blessed.